Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a uh, regularly scheduled meeting of Sunland Board of Selectmen, December 10th, 2018. We'd like to call to order at uh, 6.07. We called a little bit early tonight. Uh, we do have an appointment with residents and members of the Conservation Commission. Meeting with residents and members of the Conservation Commission, Board of Health agent, who's in the back, the highway superintendent here to talk about ditches. So to start, we'll first go the approval of minutes 11, 19, 18. Uh, we held those off last time, Scott for Tom. Correct. So well, we held off our last minutes until you were here. Not that we have to, but it's a courtesy, Mr. Chair. Thank you, yeah, Mr. Sure. Scott. Okay, minutes of the uh, 19th. Uh, motion. In the second. We have a motion made and second for the approval of 11-19-2018. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. We have a 3-0. Old business, Board of Selectmen updates. Mr. Scott, David? Uh, I don't have anything specific this week. Uh, I just came from uh, prior to this meeting, our strategy meeting for the with the administration as a municipal rep for the Frontier um, Teachers uh, contract. And it's both teachers and then the unit C, the IAs. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been a long day of looking at policy and contracts. Mm -hmm. Those meetings are beginning in <coughs> earnest and will carry through. Our first five dates are set, and that gets us through late f early February. Ooh, that's going to be quick. It's quick, right? That'd be an uh, amazing time frame, Scott. We have five meetings. It doesn't, yeah, mean, it doesn't, doesn't guarantee first, progress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's just what you've scheduled. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> When's going to be your exchange of uh, proposals? Mm. Uh, the the first one? December or the 17th. December 17th. Next Monday? Yep. Hmm. Okay. Good. Good luck. Thank you. Anything else, Scotty? Um, Capital Planning Committee is a meeting tomorrow to review. Uh, Joe Marcani is coming in to do some work on spreadsheet. Of course, <coughs> the study was in place and the funding mechanism and how the funding that we have employed translates to the capital needs across the 20 year period. So mm -hmm. using that as a forecasting tool, we expect that, that we expect that to be populated tomorrow. And tomorrow night, the Capital Planning Committee will take a first look at that population of the 20 year schedule, but also the submittals from this year's submissions from this year's uh, budget process from department heads. Those are in and we'll begin the capital process. David, how's the uh, the study, the personnel committee, um, the wage the wage study? We were going to have a meeting last week, but we didn't have a quorum, so we're going to schedule one in January. So and then we'll be going over. I think I'm. We had a few what, outstanding surveys yep. that the consultants are still waiting out. for. Okay. Th that's a, a perennial problem: getting survey information yeah. back from other yep. towns. Everybody has that pr yeah. trouble. Mm. So. Okay. Um, anything else, Scott? Uh, not on my part, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see. Uh, last week or week before, week before, the uh, South County EMS group met. Um, the biggest thing that came from that was the uh, present provider, Medway, had sold or was in the process of selling the ambulance um, to AMR, their ambulance service. What does it mean for us? Um, well, Medway is based out of Greenfield, the old Bay State, Bay State Hospital, random thing, mm -hmm. yep. and they they make the um, they they are our number one backup. So if our one or two ambulances are out on a call, they would be the uh, the, the first backup, but providing paramedic level. We also do paramedic um, intercepts for them as well if they're busy. Um, and we have done Greenfield, we have done Montague, um, and other places. So we can't, we don't, we have a very um, close working relationship with them. One of the, the, the thing is um, Medway does cover all the way up to Charlemont um, and, and handles all of that. So. It's a very, it's a much interest to us how how that's going to transpire. Right. So we got our watching on that. 
We also, the next biggest thing, biggest concern is our, our third ambulance, which, which used to be um, in service in the town of Deerfield is an international. And we have had significant uh, expenses with that ambulance. So there's, a, there's talk right now about replacing that early. Um, so we're, we're looking at it. Uh, they looked at if we could change out the boxes, um, but it seems that they would not go back with another international. They would stick with a Ford <coughs> F450, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, that seems to be in the, the ambulance world, the, uh, the truck of preference, um, local service, parts readily available, like there's a lot of reasons. So we're in the process of discussing that. Um, tentative budget with everything looks like a total increase of around $5,500 of the budget. So we would use retained earnings to uh, help pay for that uh, that ambulance. So we're gonna we'll, we'll be looking at that. They have a meeting tomorrow with the senior center um, board of oversight. Um, so we do have a new director. I would say if there's anyone out there that's interested in serving on our. Uh, um, Council of Aging, we would very much appreciate your uh, putting your name forward. Um, and it's not a it's not a high volume position. We go into a lot of meetings. It's probably only three or four a year, but it uh, it helps um, in the running of the senior center. Um, and you can bring forward concerns that you may have or you've heard with uh, senior care, availability of care, programs, et cetera. So if you're interested, we ask you to put your name forward on that. Um, as most of you can see, there's a big orange sock around the town hall. Um, they started the working on the uh, pathway park that's occurring over behind us. Uh, putting in the walkway along the river, the overlook. Um, so that start that is starting. It has started. It has started day. last week. Last week. So that that's ongoing. Um, anything else, Sherry? You have any? I'm working on putting the special town meeting warrant together. I should have that uh, draft form for you next week. Free okay. cash was certified. Um, and the treasurer, Susan Warner, has notified the board of her um, intentions to retire the end of March. So I'd like to advertise for that so position. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't read. Maybe we shouldn't accept that retirement. Wasn't <laughs> <laughs> that a lifetime appointment? I, th I thought so. I thought that was a lifetime appointment. Um, so, A, I would like to uh, note, if possible, I, I did talk to Susan already. I uh, congratulate her on being able to retire mm -hmm. and um, to, to actually to retire. A lot of people get to that position in life and they hold on to it, unlike some people sit in the front row. <laughs> you. You, you can fire me any day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but I did. I did uh, talk to Susan, and I. But more importantly, I thanked her for the heads up, because typically, we get, if we're lucky, two weeks notice. Um, yeah, Susan's really Susan's job is a very. Um, it's an it's an easy job until you're in the job, yeah. and and then you and if you under and a lot then of if you're on the municipal mm -hmm. if you're on the municipal side. Um, and I keep going back to the time we we tried to hire a treasurer at one time, and the person um, when we asked her why she wanted to be the treasurer said because she uh, liked to dabble in the stock market. Oh boy. Um, 
that was her sole reason was, for. Uh, <laughs> I remember. We that did not. Answer. We did not hire did not that person. Hire yeah. um, but it's a little uh, more. It's a little more complicated than dabbling in the stock market. Funny. And and Susan's been here for five years, mm -hmm. um, and things things have worked out very well. So yes. nice so she gave it. She gave us fair warning. Warning. Uh, so if, if we're lucky, we'll be able to find someone in the next month or so so that we could bring that person on board and work with Susan for a period of time. So we're very lucky in that respect. <coughs> what else you got? That's it. No more grants or anything? <laughs> we're working on it. I know. Um, okay. We were scheduled to go for at 6, but... Uh, the, the, the main person that, that had sent the first email concerning the dishes is still here. So we're gonna, we're gonna uh, wait till at least 6.30 before we start. So I hope everybody can, uh, FCAT will play some- uh, Live the, some live, live music, music, yeah. Nice. nice. Scenic scenes from around town, with some music. Yeah, scenes from around town. <clears throat> You want to adjourn for 15 minutes? I was just going to say, yeah, take recess. a little adjourn for 15 yeah, minutes. Recess. Well, recess. Do, how about, do, do we have anything to do on the uh, license renewals? There was a table that left four names last for our last Yep, and we have those meeting. now, I believe, downstairs. There were some items that were still incomplete, and that was important. Are we able to move anything else forward? I believe you have everything no. now. But I don't know that Cindy updated the table yet. So we don't have we don't have any other licenses to okay? Um, you do. So move to, you want me to get my, maybe I still have Do you have your table? We moved some last week, right? We moved the majority of them. Yeah. Stay. Stay. I had that. Tom, you're not waiting on Jennifer, are you? No. Stan Mitchkowski. Huh? Stan Mitchkowski. Stan. Stan. I don't have that list. I don't either. Oh, is it? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, there it is. On you have it by 17. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, so uh, we were waiting on. Donuts, and we have Mike's Maze. I'll uh, second. The motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 My son has been running probably two months. Any more? Yep, that was it. We did all the rest of them. We did the rest of the slate. Last week. All right. So you want to do a uh, recess until 6.30? Yeah, like sure. 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I entertain a motion to uh, recess to 6.30. Uh, motion. Second. We have motion made and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, we're adjourned. To we are back. We, uh... Sorry. Okay. This is about this meeting. I know. Okay, so we start. We started uh, earlier at six o'clock to uh, roll through our business, so we could have uh, our undivided attention for uh, this discussion. We're going to have about uh, ditches. Um, so we started the conversation a couple of weeks ago, um, and there was some information. There, there's a lot. There's a lot to go with ditches. It's not a simple thing. So, we asked the conservation commission. Kurt, uh, Jennifer, and Mark are here from the conservation commission, um, so they can help answer some questions. We also have the health inspector is in the back, and that's Steve Ball. Um, Steve Ball may be able to. Um, there's other questions that he may be able to answer. And we have our highway superintendent, George Emery, who is in the back 
back of the, um, the, the room also. So I, I guess the one, first thing I want to say is that a lot, a lot of times when you deal with something that matters, sometimes your, your voice can raise and you may become a little impatient. And I would just, I would just remind everyone um, that it's okay to care. Um, it's okay, it, and, and we actually like people when they, they come to the meeting because we usually get better solutions when people that care have the discussion. But we would like to have a discussion about it. Um, I don't think we're going to solve 100 years worth of problems tonight, um, but at, maybe at least we're going to try to uh, get us on the right path. Um, so what, what I'd like to do is if you could address everything towards the board of selectmen up here for the questions, uh, wait to be called on. Um, and what I'd like to do is get some background. So I'd like to start with a Kurt and the Conservation Commission to, to let you know what they know to this point, if that's okay with you, Kurt? Sure. Okay. Um, so Finally, Kurt, Jennifer, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so Kurt, Kurt's been in, and, and we have talked about, and just so, we, we, we as a board of selectmen have talked about ditches in the, in the recent past and the conservation and, and board of, boards of health has talked about it also. So Kurt, if you could start, we'd be greatly appreciative. Sure, so again, from the conservation commission perspective, ditches have had a, quite a storied history in town um, and it's been on again and off again as, as y'all are aware. And so certainly over the years that I've been associated with the Conservation Commission, which is I'm almost 30, I guess, or so, wow. it's a long time, uh, there's been different initiatives that have come forth to the town uh, with regard to solving the flooding problem and the backup of the ditches. And so, um, and again, the, the town at one point commissioned a study uh, that was done and then by a consulting firm. And then we, later on, one of our uh, graduate students at UMass, Colleen Sampson, um, did her professional master's degree program on, on the Meadowbrook um, system in particular and Meadowbrook, Meadowbrook Meadows, I think it's called there along Hadley Road. Um, and so she had groundwater gauges in and she interviewed the residents and things like that as well. And then, uh, you know, they kind of died, but then in these really high rainfall years like now, uh, it certainly is really compounds the problem. Uh, and, the select board probably knows the history of, rumor has it, you know, the town used to maintain those ditches, the highway department used to maintain those ditches many years ago, um, but certainly, we, I, don't, I don't think we have the equipment to do it now, uh, it's very expensive, there's regulations in effect as well that complicate it, there's access to private lands that, that complicate it as well, so, uh, you know, the select board over the years has been trying to solve the problem, but it seems like every time they kind of Hit a hit a rock wall of one kind or another. Um, if I could say something sure. for a moment, sure. That that has always been. A, we're talking about the dish. That's always been done by a large machine. That the town does never have. I've I've been born here, so I know yeah. I've seen right. this many times. Yeah. 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 And yeah. they've always used an excavator from one of the local people. Yeah. And it, within a week, you can do the whole thing, mm -hmm. from from the town it's almost center line to here. Yeah. A little bit about the wetland regulations that relate to clearing the ditches um, is that typically if it's an active uh, agricultural practice, farmers have the right to maintain the ditches without coming to the Conservation Commission for a permit. Okay? The only stipulation is they can't make it wider or deeper than kind of historic levels. Okay, but again, we know that most of these ditches are full of sediments that have washed in over the years, debris, and such like that. So there are guidelines that kind of uh, guide the farmers with regard to how much of the ditch they can excavate and clear out the sediments up. Okay? And so essentially when we see the farmers doing it, it's an exempt activity for, for, for normal agricultural maintenance and practices. So we don't typically get engaged with it. Uh -huh. In order for a farm ditch to drain, it has to drain from the river all the way back. Right, and that's the problem. So yeah. I know we're, we were living along We've got mostly agriculture actually along 
yeah. probably a very high percentage of that ditch, yeah. actually. Yeah. So um, the problem comes in, I mean, I know several of my neighbors upstream have, have been actively working on cleaning their parts of the ditch that are adjacent to their lands, but they have no access to other properties further down. So again, they can do the best job they can on theirs, but if it's backing up downstream of them, it's gonna still back up where they are. So that's a source of the, the challenge. But let me finish the regulation. So certainly farmers have the right and the opportunity to maintain and clean the ditches, okay, as part of their agriculture practices. If a neighbor right next to the farm field and a person has his lawn and, uh, and, a, and a residential lot and it's not in active farming, which is defined by the regulations, they need to come to the Conservation Commission to request a permit in order to do ditch maintenance. Similarly, if the highway department comes to us and say, we want to maintain these ditches and do this and this, they, again, they need a permit under the State Wellness Protection Act to do it. In contrast with farmers, they don't. They can just go ahead and do the work just when they do it within certain guidelines. Um, they can go ahead and do it. So, and this is the root, this is the challenge, right? Is that, well, there's a couple of challenges. One, we've had our second heaviest rainfall on record ever uh, since records started being kept uh, this past year, which just compounds the problem. Plus, um, you know, there's continued sedimentation, uh, you know, debris, uh, grass clippings, uh, branches, and things like that have been put in the ditches too that's restricted the, the flow as well. So it all adds up to a big problem for, for people. And will the CONCON generally grant those permits? <clears throat> you know, we've never been asked to. Um, you know, if we, if certainly, we're happy to work with individuals or the highway department or the town board in order to facilitate that. And we certainly would, but we just have to follow the regulations and make sure the clearing is done according to the standards for the state. Yes. Is there a way to do a comprehensive um, type of permitting process to get all the there is all the uh, landowners in line for the same yeah. project and do a cost share or well I don't know about the cost share but <laughs> certainly there is I mean it'd be easiest to do it uh, and I'm not suggesting this is the route we should go but if the highway department you know had uh, instructions from the town to do it we would try to do kind of a master notice of intent that they plan to do this, this, and this, it's good for three years, and then it could certainly be renewed for another three years after that, uh, as far as to making sure those orders and conditions are done in such a way that, to follow the regulations and protect the resources. So that's certainly possible. Um, I just wondered, um, with the conversation we were having a few minutes ago, some of these ditches were created by farmers for runoff for their farming, and other areas of wetlands that we have now were created as a result of building roads so is that true for all the all various wetlands in town that that some of them are the result of of road building and aren't, aren't sort of like naturally occurring they create they happen as a result of human activity that did but that's not distinguished under the law okay i suspect a lot of the wetlands along route 116 were probably be uh, developed because of the road 116 going in, right? That was before my time. Um, so, but again, just because you have a wetland along 116 that developed because of that road being built doesn't mean it's protected any less or more than a, what you say, a, a natural wetland. There's only a few uh, stormwater detention basins that are specifically put in to take the runoff uh, to do the those are not regulated typically as, as wetland resource areas uh, by the state regulations. So they're, they're the only ones that are a little bit different than be it natural or man-made wetlands. And do we have that type in town, what you were just describing? Detention basin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Kurt, what's the DEP's role in this filing? If it's a if it's a comprehensive, you know we we've, we've done some work, we've yeah. done some NOI, and then it goes. Well, so it all goes to the conservation commission. So the conservation commission is the one charged with um, fulfilling the state wetlands protection act and our wetlands local bylaw as well. Uh, it's filed with DEP. 
Um, typically, DEP, uh, they can offer technical advice uh, sometimes with regards to the NOI if they choose to. Uh, the only time the DEP really gets involved is if there's an appeal of our decision uh, right. that they get engaged. But typically, no, they're not the permitting authority. We are essentially the permitting authority under the jurisdiction of the state budget. I just want to, I want to just clarify too that, that there is a difference between surface runoff and water that's rising from a rising water table due to our rainfall, correct? You know what I mean? In that uh, you don't want to confuse clearing out a ditch is not going to solve a rising oh, water table. Gotcha, I want to make that clear because those are two right. different right. things. Right. Right. And I think that's, it's been a long time since was, I reviewed it, but Colleen's yeah. study where she had test wells in. Right. Um, she found that, and what David's talking about is just because the stream's higher uh, doesn't necessarily mean that's the, that's the cause of, the base, of your basement flooding, that oftentimes the, the groundwater levels change, uh, and so it, it, it's sometimes, it's, oftentimes it's a much bigger issue than just how much water in a ditch can certainly affect nearby homes, but oftentimes, I know this is the case in Meadowbrook, uh, that oftentimes it's actually the raising groundwater that is that even if the stream was was flowing, which can help with the groundwater, but they found that that you know that in its, itself is not big enough conveyance of water to solve uh, the rising groundwater swell that people's basements sometimes intersect with. Those were the bulk the bulk of the conclusion section of the report, and then some policy recommendations, including some 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 basic maintenance under the guidance of the Conservation Commission. But the conclusion of, of her work, and it's pretty thorough, very thorough, uh, was that the bound water level was a more uh, assignable mm. problem to, to basement. Just is. Yeah, I mean, um, she was talking specifically for Meadowbrook. Yeah, area. exactly right. Well, she says there's a relationship with the, the ditch drain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, oh, yeah. I'm not discounting it in any way, shape, or form. Just yes. you got to be able to move the water. If water's sitting on top of water, where's it going to go? Right. Right? If the groundwater table is high, so again. Right. But we do have definitely areas of reduced flow. Mm -hmm. Yep. And like you said, I, which is why you're talking about trying to get a coordinated effort, because if you only do a piecemeal, it's not going to solve the problem. Right. So in one other piece yeah. that I could add, Kurt, out of the NOI and that <clears> other, <throat> the town can go in any culvert, any road crossing, and no trouble at all. Farmers, the same situation, ditches along their properties. There's a boundary beyond the end of a culvert that the town can actually maintain, but it's a very short boundary. I think it's, exactly. it's less than 10 feet yeah. total. Yeah. And then the risk, of course, of changing elevations back to the natural, removing fill, it's important to watch those gradations got to make sure that everything still flows in the right direction you don't just make a pond because you happen to be aggressive about your ditch clearing mm -hmm. but even if you clean out a culvert right? right and you haven't taken care of all that sediments yep. upstream all those sediments are just going to be fill right back into that culvert and go. also uh, the debris that's been thrown in the ditch by folks is going to wash out and mm -hmm. block that culvert as well what do you do when that culvert's not built completely no, or not built right, right. Well, that's a that's a, a question for the that, that superintendent, superintendent, the highway superintendent. superintendent. There's certainly, um, and there's a lot of those I suspect. Um, but um, you know, the, the conservation commission, there are standards by the Army Corps of Engineers now that if you do replace a culvert, they like it. Um, they would like certain uh, criteria to be followed with mm -hmm. regard to making it. Um, Having higher aquatic tidings. Well, you would want the culvert to be the same height uh, level as the, in the water, right? You do, but you got to be a little careful because you know sediments have, have filled those ditches over decades and decades, so the water level is actually higher. Uh, and sometimes you know, it's always high; it's almost half the culvert's already full, right? The sediments. Oh, the one the one that's down there is eight eight inch difference between the solar the, where the steel is to, to the ground. Yeah. It's up. It's up that high. Yeah, sediment in the culvert. Yeah. yeah, and the stones sit behind it, which makes it even higher. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that makes it. Uh, that's a dam, yeah. a simple dam. It's still non-functional, but it's working. Right. Right. Can you define a culvert? No. 
<laughs> I, I can tell you what it means to me. But I don't know well, I mean, for example, is. at the corner of Old Amherst Road, <laughs> typically it's where a, it goes where the, there's all stones over there on that on Old Amherst Road where it turns off 116. Is that a culvert? Well, think of a pipe Our running road. underneath think the road. Think of a pipe underneath the road. Right, Bingo. that's a culvert. That's a culvert. Whether it's concrete, yeah, it'd be metal. concrete, galvanized metal. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby You'll see those all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure I know what you're talking about. Yep. Is there a hand up back there somewhere? So as, as a matter, one more time, if I could, Mr. Chair. So the town did bring an NOI to the Conservation Commission in 2006, and those, those were asked to be uh, combined to make one project and then resubmitted. And then that turned into engineering extension, engineering dollars. We have a baseline for that engineering study already. That's established. Do we have to basically, um, if the scope of work is the same, can we take this data, this data, Good. update it, and resubmit? Sure. Okay. So that helps us with, a, from our perspective, what a path forward looks like. Yeah, and that I, was from the day we all spent, I think, walking around. It was one of them from that. Yeah, I lost yeah. track. I mean, I know that engineering firm did a study for yep. us. And yep. then I think the general yeah. I guess the, the submitted it, and right. then it just, yeah. it just stopped. Yep. Um, so I don't know if the town lost its... Um, 2009 came along. We ran out of money. Yeah. That'll do it every time. Remember that little well, thing? Who's, respons <coughs> who's responsible for cleaning the ditch? On private properties at the town, is it the landowner? The land why, why is the town going to clean private property well, ditches? I, that gets more? to well, another question, but but that's one of the issues. Teresa, I was interested in what that baseline. So there was a baseline price tag on the, just the engineering survey, engineering study, or the whole. Yeah, there was project. no there was no project project cost project development. Cost. It was just uh, getting it to the point where the data collection was enough to submit for a full NOI. Subsequently, there was a study, graduate work study, that began that really detailed work that supports that. But scope and volume, scope and pricing was never, we never got to that point for the whole system. Because the question became, well, what part of the work do you want to do? How do you phase it in? What's its duration? You know, if my basement's flooded, I get excited. Yours isn't. You're not very excited. I'm excited. Just okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Because your basement's flooded. <laughs> no, actually, we're, we're not flooded, but we're working on it. But. Yeah, so, 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 uh, so I have a question. I don't live near a culvert yeah. or drainage dish. I live near Russell Brook. It's like 200 yeah. feet away. I've been pumping water out of my cellar for since July, mm -hmm. yeah. constantly. Same. Right. No ditch, no culvert. Same. So if I come to you and say, I want you to fix what's going on in my house because is an aquifer that runs from the hills all the way to the river, Connecticut yep. River. Yep. And we're surrounded by five streams. Mm -hmm. This is what I don't do that. Sure. I don't understand. Stuart? Yeah, just in response to that, um, at last uh, meeting, Jerry brought up a uh, very valid point that the school is all, there is town property that's affected by the sure. way the ditch mm -hmm. system works. Rich. Yep. And uh, there are roads, there are culverts, and there is a school. There is a lot of property that's affected that the town has a direct uh, responsibility for it. That's in relation to the ditches. No, I was, if it's on town property, well, it's, it's, yeah. get a question. you, you got to understand it's a comprehensive system. Estelle? I have some information Estelle? that would that would be of interest to you. you What's that now? Would you like to read it? Sure. Don't we can. Yeah. Have to bring these tonight. I knew I was going to use them. <clears throat> this is uh, John and Estelle. John was a great man. Not a bad baseball coach. Either. <laughs> or baseball player in his yeah, time. Right, right. Nah, I don't know about the player, but I know about coaching. Uh, dear Mr. and Mrs. Yucabitis, this is from the town of Sunderland in 1982, November. Enclosed, please find an easement form for securing permanent access to the ditch and or brook which runs through or near your property. This must be signed and returned to the Office of Selectmen by 
December 17th, 1982. Please note that if only one signature is required, that signature must be acknowledged before a notary public. If more than one signature is required, one may sign at home, but the other one has to sign before a notary. To my knowledge, the following people are available for notarizing. Uh, thank you in advance. And Bob Laurinaitis, Paul Corpita, and Paul Hodgkins. Um, and is this, this a copy of your? Right away. The easement. Well, that's the first one we've seen personally. Um, so thank you, Estelle. Um, but that, Stan? I, I just have, have a question about something else. Go ahead and finish with you. Okay. So, so basically what Estelle is being afforded is an easement. One of the things that we've been looking for for a long time since I know when Paul Corpito was, I mean, they, they looked through all kinds of uh, records and never have found any easements at all. So this is the first I've seen. So thank you, Estelle. Mm -hmm. Now, really now, now we've got a time. Now we got a time frame, so we may we may actually actually look at it. Yeah. So that's from November twenty fourth, nineteen eighty two. Thank you, Estelle. Do you ever want to see a, a My question was, was, okay, yeah, was when, when are you going to start, start taking care of the animals? Oh yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. One yeah. and then a horse, a dog got killed. Almost like it was. Yeah. A beaver. That's good to know that. And I, I was there. I was 100 feet up the road. I could see it. So An aggressive beaver. Could be raining. Came after the, the uh, dog. <coughs> came after the dog. Came after the dog. Did anybody, was, anybody call animal? Did you call animal control at all? Or? I, I ran up with a rake as far as I could, but yeah. by the time I got there, he was gone already. Very, mm. Very close. Jerry, Jerry and I have been down there, up and down a lot, pulling the grass out of there. And we've got a lot of movement out of there. If you take a look at it now, there's a lot. It's not sitting up like it used to be as much. We did a lot of work right there, but there's still a lot to be done. I forgot that's another complication that you mentioned last week are beavers too now. And you know, what, what stops it is all the stuff that's floating down. That's where you get the dams. I picked up four dams already out of that place. Because they'll come and they'll be for a day and they won't be there for two days and they'll be back again. Where are you talking about? So, 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 Stan, Stan. So, as as far as the beavers are concerned, Stan, um, Steve, are you able to talk about beavers? Uh, in a, in a bit, the, uh, I mean, beaver control is the responsibility of the landlord. The board of health can issue a ten-day emergency permit if uh, the beavers are in fact uh, are affecting. Um, public health, and that would include flooding the septic system, flooding the house, flooding the well, something like that. But the uh, it is the responsibility of the landlord, of the owner, to apply for the permit and to hire somebody to control the beavers. Remove? Okay. You mean remove control? What, what during, uh, yeah. yeah, you can yeah, get a 10-day Because you're, right? you're, you're not allowed to move animals. You can't move them. You can kill them, but you, you can't move them. Yeah. It's not just a so, so, Kurt, is there anything else you wanted to add, or Jennifer, or Mark, as far as the conservation is concerned? Well, yeah, I'm a little concerned about that culvert. Um, the culvert? The culvert. I measured it. It's eight, feet, eight inches of water. <laughs> And stones. It comes up eight inches of stone. And, and so uh, you lost you lost a lot of money. you know you got a lot of the water being held there. This is picking it up. Brown crossroad crossing. Is it? Yeah, the brown. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the next okay. one down. Yeah. Isn't that you can you can go on the end and you can see it and you can see the stones that they put beyond it. And so some places there's yeah. only four inches of water. Which color? Are you yeah, that's about? what I was gonna say. Can we clarify that? Is it the new one that got put in a few years ago? Yeah, yeah. The, one near the new concrete one. There's stone in the bottom. Then. There's stone there. You we put stone it. around the bottom, and that's it. When we when we put the culvert in, before we put the culvert in, there's a layer of stone. It's a three quarter minus. Yeah, well, this there's is a layer of that, stone. and then the culvert comes out. Like riprap, riprap. Yeah. I don't think we put any riprap. In. There's quite a bit of it there too. Because at one time, wasn't that supposed to be? Curved before it went in, instead of heading right out and come right back again like it is now. 
I went believe in the so. same direction the old one came Because I know it was built that way, but then all the stone got, went down the road. And nobody ever did anything about it. Well, I, I know George I know George pulled uh, um, stuff from in there that went back to 1910, George, I think, wasn't there or something? 1918. Yeah. 1918. So, I mean, so he was taking stuff out, Stan, that was from 1918 that actually was... Uh, All logs the logs in the bottom of that. So I don't think he... Cha I don't think... we He didn't change anything, I don't think. Uh, you can see it now. You can see the stone itself. Like I said, it's on the uh, west side, there's four inches of places where there's only four inches of wire. And How big are the stones? Are they two or three feet? Yeah. How big are the stones are you talking about, roughly? So, so George, could you take a look at that tomorrow? Thank you. Um, if you if you could maybe Stan, could you, uh, uh, George, want to meet up with Stan and and see what never he's caught, never caught each other. Yeah, um, we playing phone tag. Oh yeah. Well, before you leave the meeting tonight, maybe you can, uh, Stan, if you could work with uh, George and set up a time to, for tomorrow to stop by there, because it should be not, it's good weather tomorrow, so, okay? It's going to be dry. So you can, and you can talk, talk I'm there right through. I'm right there. I'm only 100 feet away. That's where I live. I thought in retirement, though, you're all over the world now, world traveler. I've been going, I go everywhere, but that kind of retired. When I retired, I stopped it. You know, I it's not when you retired. Go to work at eight, two o'clock in the morning, come home at nine, nine o'clock at night. I know. I'm sick of that. Those are the good days, huh, Stan? Yeah. All right. So, w one concern that that we always came back to and um, was about easements on on the property at Agustel, and and I. That would be one of the the hardest things for the town to do. To somebody, Jerry, Jerry may have said, or, or Stan, you said earlier, it, it's for for us to have the highway department go on to Jerry Box land to do the ditches would be like going to Tom Fight and Kevin's house to plow his driveway. So unless unless we unless we can come up with ease, when when you put the easements together, and I don't think that's an insurmountable task, um, but when you when you're when you're able to put easements together, then it then it becomes a function. It's easier for the town to go on onto those properties at that time. So one of the things that we have to look at is is try to identify. Does it matter if they're called perennial streams? Hurt or um, it certainly does. Yep. Yeah. It has a big impact, right? On but I mean, in essence, the same is be the same orders of conditions, though. I mean, so a perennial stream is different than intermittent in the interests that are protected. But I think for the most part, the conditions would be about the same, right? Just more protection of the bank, maybe. Mm -hmm. the rivers. Right. Well, certainly on the perennial stream, there'd be probably limits on where you could put the spoil. Yeah. Because it goes right. 200 feet to either side of the perennial stream. Yep. So, versus the intermittent, does it have that wide barrier on either side, that wide buffer? Yep. It's not actually a buffer, it's part of the resource area. So, certainly it would manage to from what they could do with the spoil in terms of spreading it mm -hmm. versus taking it away it if it's a perennial versus an intermittent right. so that would make a difference so perennial means it runs all the time mm -hmm. yeah. and spoil is what you would dig out to mm -hmm. clear the ditch and then spread yeah. it on the sides uh -huh. right. yeah so and then, 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 and then you have important. intermittent streams which are a slightly different definition yes um so i think there's three levels isn't there intermittent perennial Not as far as the right no just intermittent and perennial are the okay two. And so the, the you're thinking of the river front. Okay, so there's a there's a couple definitions that's on, that that's associated with any perennial. Okay, so there there there's definition to have. So so I would think that we I think that we have and again I said we earlier that we probably couldn't handle tonight, but we tried a few years ago, probably back in 2006, Scott. 2009 uh, it started in well it started in 2003 this report came out in 2006 and we were we were actually got all the way to the uh, conservation commission 
uh, with a notice of intent, but then there was a question about bundling them because of the, the three branches, not just Meadowbrook, but looking at the digits <coughs> holistically, which I think is what is what DeWitt is talking about. And just to put in an order of magnitude, to look at the digits holistically, and the list of abutters notified that were part of the survey is in the low 100. Uh, I saw you flipping through all those so names. So if you're, you're going to think about this holistically, you're talking about getting easements or grants from basically a hundred landowners to go on their land and do whatever it is to do this stuff. I didn't say it was. I said holistically. It's just you want to look right. at it like a project. Right. So, Jerry? I've met this young man here, and he's worked in town his whole life. He's worked almost for every farmer in town. He knows all about the land. He knows where the pipes are. He knows a lot about wetlands. This is Mark. Mark Benjamin, you want to stand up and give us a little? Well, I won't stand, but I'll tell you what's going on here. We're going to have a serious problem if we don't address this problem shortly. We're going to have a few things that are going to happen here. We're going to make a ghost town out of this town <laughs> eventually. We don't address this problem soon. Because people are going to walk away from their home because their houses are going to be contaminated by the Board of Health or a building inspector. That's number one. You don't want to address this problem? In 10 years, this town will be bankrupt because we will not have any more tax revenue. That's number one. Mark, yeah. you don't have to yell. Well, I'm here okay. because okay. I and want this corrected. Okay. Now, one thing you building all these things and not addressing these problems that are occurring in town for the homeowners and farmers. You're talking about building a senior housing center here for people to live in. You're saying there's wetlands here. Well, there is not a wetland here. If you think about it, I don't think anybody walked that property. I wasn't on that property, but I could see that property from the neighboring's property. I worked that land back in the 70s. When Warner Brothers built their yard, going back before I was even born, that was a swale went through there. Mm -hmm. When they put in the highway, there's a pipe from Batinsky's boundary all the way to the other side of 116. It goes across through here to drain that swale started from North Silver Lane, goes down by Roy's, mm -hmm. and ends up down to Jerry's place. Yeah, we know that, we know that, Mark. Yeah. Well, that pipe is something's wrong with it. Somewhere along the way, it's plugged up or it's broken. That could be drained out. You build that senior housing, there's going to be a problem with water in the southern sphere. What ball metal might be a problem? We don't know. Nobody's complaining yet, but they might be. We have a bad winter and the spring melt off with a lot of snow. We're going to have big problems. Actually, Mark, the wetlands have been identified, and that's part of the planning process is how to, ma uh, how to manage those, the weather events, the water. So actually, that, 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 that in, in Mark, Somebody did walk that, and it was known that what the conditions were back there, and it was never thought that the entire thing could be used for senior center for for any type of housing. So we, we were aware we were aware of the limitations of the property. But does anybody understand about that pipe? I I think so. I, I we 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 we've talked about that. Yeah. Well, I think you have to send the camera down there and see if it's plugged up or collapsed. Okay. That's, that's a good so one thing that ought to be addressed right here. Is that the one that goes under 116? Yes. That's a state issue then. Well, in a sense it's not because Warner Brothers put it in in your yard. But it still goes under a state. It so does. Have to go the state. state does that too, but Warner Brothers. We'll, we'll talk We'll talk to him, Mark. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to Absolutely. be said. No, we'll, we'll talk and to him. And our waterways are all plugged up due to trees and bushes. Good point. I don't think people realize there's a picture of the buttonball tree right there on the wall. I'm looking at it while I'm sitting here. 
Do you realize what's on top is down in the ground when a plant is growing? Mm -hmm. So that ground is rising all the time. It's in the waterways, you're making a dam. Thank you, Mark. I would say, if I could, for a minute, if you, but, look, if, so, you, if you look at that water he's talking about, there's places where it's three feet deep, and there's places where there's that much, and there's a lot of it, where is that, which is there's a lot of places where there's, it's all, all clay in there. You, you pull the, pulling everything out of there, and the, and the water starts taking it away, but then it piles up again somewhere else. So I mean, you got you know, you don't stop do here and this and this. You start here and you go there and you finish it. That's the only way to solve it. And you know, with the equipment Warner Brothers has right now, and I know because I worked for them for a long time, they got stuff they could do. They could do that full stretch in one day. On one, three days, five days. I don't know. Stanley, it's not that easy because there's a lot of trees that have to be removed. There's, there's a lot of stumps that are going to have to be removed at the same time. There's, there's a bunch on the, on the uh, south end of it there. There's a, yeah, uh, there's a lot of... There. But you're getting not, they're knocked down and you just pull them over with an excavator. Well, and you pull them out and you're all done. Where are you going to do with the trees when you're done? Well, you can take it and you can... So... Truck, so... Or what? I, 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 I know what you're saying, Stan. Um, it, it's, it's not that easy to go in and just start digging. And, and I agree with Mark. There's a lot of other, you know, the stumps and the logs, and it's, it's going to take longer than that. But my, my suggestion is a lot. The last time we tried to do this, we asked, we asked for. A group of people that would help um, spearhead that that uh, process because it, it 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 will it will take some time and effort and and it it may last a year may last two years uh, but we we asked for a ditch committee you know a group of people in town that would be willing to work on that committee to to to, to work go between the board. And the conservation and the engineer that or group that would have to come in, um, and we're I, I would think that we're still willing to do that if we, if we can get you know three to five people at least to serve on that committee, we we and and bring something forward, such as do we need do we actually need easements? Do we um, once we get the notice of intent into the conservation, you know. What 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 was it? What would it cost? What would it cost to do an entire uh, a holistic program from start to finish? How much how much to to do that? Because you're right. Because to start without knowing inverts from the beginning to the end, it's it's absolutely you just can't haphazardly start digging along this way. So it it is going to take a little bit. It, it is going to take a little bit of effort. Um, and and people and and typically what I found the people that have the the most interest in that make it happen a lot quicker than anybody else so I so I again will ask if if people would be interested if we can get three to five people that were willing to work on this with us with with us not for us but with us to try to make that happen and you're looking at two of them right now I'm, I'm actually looking at three right there I'm, I'm looking at three next uh, to Jerry's to the right hand side and if, and if and I we'd be more than happy to work with you and about about funding it, how would you get it done, and we can work through all those problems. And if there's a couple more people that want to work on the group, we'd be because that's the only way it's going to get done. Okay. Now that you say that, right now is the best time. Absolutely. There's a lot of companies that have shut down for winter that are looking for things to do, and they'll give you a good rate. Correct. I understand. I mean, there's, they're right now. All you got to do is go up to them and say, "This is what we want." Da 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 da. da and you're all set to go. I'll, yeah. I remember a guy that used to do work for me that I'd bring him in in January to dig a water main leak, and that guy would always complain <coughs> that I had him working Stanley. Yeah. <coughs> I have another question. Yeah. <laughs> I have another thing to say. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mark. We uh, have a, This is addressed pretty well, better than the last meeting was here, with a few people that are here. If all you people would work together, and we talk about this, and there is easements, believe it or not. Sure. 
I agree. There's easements from way back, but you have to go to the registry deeds and find them. We have tried, but we and we will continue to try, Mark. But it's from way back. Well, the, and the, it's not easy to find them because I we went look. My father and I went to go look for an easement on something else one time that went through our property. You and know, we had to go back five or six, seven books to find out what it was about. And 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 you, and you make a good point, Mark. Be, but I I do know, looking through the old old minutes, that is either Charlie Hepburn or Paul Corpita or, or one of those guys went and and tried to find easements, and and they actually and I was told oh. and I wasn't here that they actually ended up going to the attorney general's office or inspector general's office and they couldn't find anything for for those easements. Well, they're, but they're, they may be, and it, it may be, but Mark, it may be easier just to start from scratch and start a new. Well, that's exactly what's right. happening. Well, we, be, have, we have another thing in our history of our town of 300 years of being incorporated. Yep. Okay? Well, actually, they can't find our incorporation paper. Well, I'm going to tell you where they are. Not, not that that's a problem, because I, I asked if that means that if all the residents could get their tax money back, but uh, that, did, that didn't go very that didn't go very far. I'm going to tell you what, where it happened in all the first papers of 300 years ago when the town was incorporated. I was not aware of this until a year ago or so. Do you know how the township started? Yeah, I think. But go I ahead. I was not aware of it until about 15 years ago. What's that? Okay. I met these people from Worcester County. I met them in a restaurant in Hackfield on a cold day in January. Wasn't on a Friday night, was it? No, during the day, actually. <laughs> middle okay. of the day, afternoon. This man came in looking for some stuff. He says, I need a load of sauce. He asked the waitress for a phone call and a cell phone. He said, I'll get you a load of sawdust. I said, you want one tomorrow? Yeah. Sorry. Another guy was there. He says, call the guy up and tell him to bring him a load of sawdust. He didn't ask how much it was. He said, there'll be a load of sawdust here tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. He became friends with this man. See this man every day down here. They were going to have a clinic. They had a horse farm. They were going to have a riding thing. A guy from Germany was coming to teach people how to ride English style horses. He told me to come to this big function. It was in February. It was cold in January. February was kind of cold. It warmed up. They had that function. It was a beautiful day in February. So I drove up in there, right up near the barn, got out of the pickup. Walked in the barn, he was here, he was glad I showed up. I showed up about three hours after the function started. He's going to the house and have something to eat. Goes in the house. I never been in this never been on this property in my life. I goes to the had all the food on the counter. It was a ham I cut some ham off. This lady comes up and says, Who are you? I told her who I was and she says, Oh, I know who you are. So I got to know this lady. She says to me, she says, you know how these towns and cities started in Massachusetts? There's 350 towns and cities in the state of Massachusetts. How did they start? Does anybody know the answer in this room? They took the land from the Indians. No, no, <laughs> no. We had to have a place of worship and a place oh, yeah. for mm -hmm. For yeah. you have to have a church. Meetings. Yes. Well, right. supposedly our first church was built, and I heard they were celebrating their anniversary last year. Mm -hmm. I donated something for a raffle to the church. He says the first first church burned in this town, so that's where all our first paperwork came went to. It's in ashes. That's why we don't have any paperwork of the township when it started. Could be. I, this is what I heard. I don't know how true it is. Well, all the all. And the, we don't know because we weren't here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I do know that 
almost all the other towns and cities, have, their paperwork is in Boston. They're still looking for ours. They said they may find it someday. But <laughs> well, they might. I know. But, I mean... It's in a time but capsule our under the are church. Gone. What's that? It's in a time capsule under the church. Well, wow, no, no, no. Our, our stuff got burned. I, I All right. So, so, so we we have we have three members that are willing to serve on the committee. Let's put if it's okay, I'd like to put it out there we, for a couple more weeks, and we can we can make that we can make that committee, um, and we can start and we can start working. Um, Mark, I just have a question. I'm assuming the town is going to take responsibility for this, I'm jumping way ahead. I'm just jumping way ahead. No, that's a, mm -hmm. Yeah. What about liability issues if something? Is damaged by a contractor, or some reason the house gets worse because the work was done. Mm -hmm. How does the town not become responsible for any potential liability? Since we're talking about over a hundred potential mm -hmm. abutters, and that's, that's one of the that's one of the questions that we'll have to ask. Right, you'll have to, have to clarify that up front. Yeah. We, we, those are all, those are all. I mean, those are questions that we'll try to answer. And, and, and just like, and just like, and, just, and, and I, and, and not to get scare anybody, but you know, you do have to talk about funding. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, is, is funding done through, you know, in, in, in when I look in the old records um, and I find out that the only thing I really find about ditches per se in the old meetings is when they used to have an open sanitary sewer that ran along Main Street and, and they would actually, you were responsible as a landowner to either maintain the sanitary sewer yourselves and or you would have to pay a fee to the town to to maintain that that sanitary sewer. I I would say that you know when you look when you get down to talking about expense, I mean is it done through a betterment? You know, no different than a, the sewer or water. You, you'd have to look at that. That may be an option. Um, but we have to we have to talk about those things. We have to get them. Everything got to be on the table so that um, we can have a, a thorough discussion about them. This is the only meeting. I'm not going to be on the committee, so I'm just bringing up these issues. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. Teresa? I think it's a good point, speaking to Mark, because I've been thinking about a committee trying to think comprehensively that having somebody from the Finance Committee and from the Conservation Committee participate on that would really accelerate, and you know, the conversations could be much more productive if the answers are at the table. Okay. Well, it sure. definitely it would. And they would ask the kinds of questions that Finance Committee folks because would ask. Yeah. This is going to be a very, it's not a simple solution because if it was, we'd have solved it years ago. It's going to take a lot of, a lot of effort. I volunteer, hmm? I volunteer for the conservation. I think my, my, my guess is, Teresa, you're probably going to get a board, member of the Board of Selectmen on there also just yeah. to, to try to keep things moving and to, to converse with Sherry and, and that. So, so they're probably, right now I see five people just... But but I think it's gonna you know people are gonna it's gonna be you know hopefully can get a lot of work done in a very short short period of time um, and with the right guidance I think we can we can make headway. It's important to bear in mind, if I could, Mr. Chair, a lot of that work is administrative work before any shovels can go in the ground. But, well, that's that's where the honestly you're right. That's where probably like that's seventy how you stay five out of jail. And, yeah. That's where the bulk of the work is going to be. I agree. Yeah. Is, yeah. Because usually the town clerk keeps us out of jail. Right. That's how you the town clerk is our best friend and, most of the time. And one more point, too, Mr. Chair, if I could, is this is like building a road. Whatever, let's say we've, everything magically happens, we've got our plan put together and everything, and we're moving ahead. It's like a road. You can't build it and then walk away and not maintain it. So whatever, so whatever we... Well, actually, the town, the town, the town well, never built that road. That, well... May, that may be, but this is my point, is that we can't do this in the future. That's my whole point. But you also don't want to correct what, you know, the, the, the not doing it after they put them in. That's what I don't get. I'm English, and obviously, um, you know, I'm new. I've only been here three years in Sunderland. But what was the year those ditches were built? I just want to get my time on. Well, there was no, uh, these There's ditches, no they go back hundreds of years. We don't have any legal document when they were started. Right. Started. But there's, I call them waterways because there are some ditches. Yeah. And there are brooks and there's swales. There's three definitions of waterways through this town. Okay. Swales are more runoff water will go into 
the ditches or brooks. It's a wee tiny pond. That's the way it is. A ditch is water for runoff water. Yes, it runs in a direction. A brook is running water year round. I think one of the things that will be done in this project is clear definitions for all of this, but not, not ones that are based, they'll be based on fact and scientific information. Because if we're going to do this, and don't mistake not wanting, we certainly not only want to do this, but we want to do it the right way. Watch when this thing gets going, how fast it will go. That would be great. And it's going to take effort from a lot of people. It will go really fast. But we, when we do this, like you say, we should walk away from it. Well, that's, that's well, it, because it, there has to be a plan that going it forward. It's just for engineers. It's just for the town. Mm -hmm. the future of the town. Exactly. You've got to remember the trees. And we also have to keep current weather trends in mind. Exactly. Because the climate change. You look at the trees that are there. They're not going to be there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. They're going to be there for 20 years. 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 They're going to be there they're really like a monster. It'll go. Yeah, well, we, have to, we have to get to the point where we can get the equipment first. When was the last time it was done? I'm still trying to get my timeline. Well, has it ever been dredged? Has it ever? You said yes, it has. Yes. Well, it, it, it probably depends on what ditch you're talking about. There, there's a number of I them in town. There's not a ditch in town. Well, the, 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 the main arteries is the brooks. Most of the brooks were not cleaned out for years and years. Maybe 50 years. The brooks, not a ditch, a brook. Swales, some of the swales got filled in. People would plow them and till them, and they got filled in some places. And they built houses, Mark. Right. Uh, right. And they, People and built they, houses. And they built them. houses. You got to add this up. And they took, 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 and they they took farm crop, they took. Roads and that it, farmers it used to. Like nothing. And once they got in there, they would go. Wait a minute. One guy talk at a time. They 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 took they took um, homes were built, um, and and if you go back to look where all the old farmhouses were, very few of the old farmers would build on Near on the, the flats. They would build them more on elevated on That's elevated true. parcels. Exactly. Because they knew. And 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 then what happened over. Since '60s, I would say the '60s or so, maybe. Mark, I mean, I well, I'd say the problem really occurred probably 40 years ago. Yeah, because and, and it, the housing boom started 40 years ago in a big way. Yeah, people who built houses before 50 years ago were people that lived in this town. Parents gave them a lot to build, or grandparents gave them a lot to build a house on. Right, and most most of the homes were on, on higher were on higher ground. Yes. So so that and and that's 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 what the old that's what the the old settlers used to do. And they built the houses. They threw the threw the cellar holes out, and they made an old around there, and they were above the water tank. Correct. All right. So do we have new ground to cover? I just want I just want to if you can summarize what's been said and what we're going to do about this, so that we have a plan. Back as on the glass. Out the door here. Uh, yes. Um, so we, we talked about the maintenance of the town ditches. Um, Kurt Kurt had mentioned, and, and I don't, I think it can't be forgotten that the farmers can can maintain their ditches uh, as long as they're within historical. Within long within historical sight lines, um, and it's used for agricultural purposes with no need to be going for the town. The highway department could um, request an NOI from the um, the conservation commission to do that. What that means is that the town, through the highway department, could could petition a uh, NOI. An NOI is notice, notice of intent. intent. I'm sorry. Crisis of permit, just another way. Shoot. Is that just for the culverts or for the whole project? The whole project. Okay. Um, that, that's correct, isn't it, Kurt? Yeah. Um, the, the, the Conservation Commission is the permitting authority, um, which is a good thing to know. And the DPE, from question from Scott, the DEP is there to, to answer 
or you could someone could um, question a permit file a protest of the permit and would go to the DEP so the DEP would open but the DEP is a resource that we could that we can use um, earlier reports is that we talked about the, the rise in the groundwater level can at times be a bigger contributor to water in the basement more so than the runoff per se um, for, for us, it's a good thing to know that the town can maintain within 10 feet of a culvert. Um, that there is a need for a committee. And, and the, the, what we do with a committee is we have to start from scratch and we have to put together a definition. We haven't done that yet. About the definition what, of the job of the committee. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we'd, have to, we'd have to put together a charge of the committee that, that we'd, we'd I'd work on. <laughs> that we have at, at least three people that are interested, for actually four, a member of the conservation, and probably fifth from the Board of Selectmen that would work on it. Um, and I think that that charge would sum up where our next steps would be, I think. Would I have one more thing to say. What's that, Mark? Um, um, can I just finish okay, one, the thought? And the suggestion was made that someone from the different departments of town at least be auxiliary people yes. to this committee yeah and, and as I said that yes. we'd probably have a um, mark has already volunteered from the conservation we'll probably have one from from the uh, board of selectmen and finance perhaps? If, if we can finance finance committee we we're looking for more people to serve on the finance committee at all times Sorry. and if you want please call our moderator if you'd like to join <laughs> um, but we're always looking for people for that that's why I said a board of selectmen just because um, so, Jerry, you have another question? I still have a question. Yes, sir. Okay, so we got a lot of rain this year. We got some beaver trouble. A lot of lack of maintenance on the ditches. But how about the the sugar loaf estates over there? It's dumping water into the brook, which makes that run almost like a full full time brook, where it used to almost dry up in the summer with just you know just minimal water. But now, whenever there's a big rain event, the rain event comes into our to the ditch and it makes Makes the problem worse. So, Let's see. Did, did you did you, did you hear that question, Kurt? Sugar loaf. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know for a fact, but I, certainly I suspect they drain a lot of their the runoff parking the and maybe their roof water into a pipe. That do you, do you know where the pipe comes in, Jerry? Yeah, it's somewhere north of the Thomas Farm. Yeah. It doesn't east, surprise me. East to east side of uh, Hadley Road. So, do they have to maintain? I thought, I thought water had to be maintained on site. Well, now they would be, but when that they was were built before, right? Built. right. Well, so they would, they wouldn't have had to. Not then. At so that time, people would before the regulations. Like people put in pipes and drain off water into the ditches or mm -hmm. brooks at that time, because there was really no no programs. So this was before the regulations yeah, went into right. effect. So. But there's one thing that has to be addressed to some of these places where these brooks are, where there's water is here, UG 365 days a year. There is quicksand in some of them. I don't think people are realized that there is quicksand in some of these brooks. I can show you one spot, it's a little bigger than this room, that they lost a crawler tractor in there one time, mm -hmm. back in the later 40s. Yeah. My father was tearing down the old hay burn. They had a load of timbers on the truck. My father and uncle took the load of timbers and they saved the tractor. My cousin John is living. He's 73 years old, lives on Main Street. He remembers that. Yeah. I was told many times, don't ever go there. When you see quicksand, beauty, there's nothing grows there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is there a time frame for setting the first meeting for the committee? Um, we, we're going to put out. We're going to put out a notice for a couple weeks. Um, Will that be on the website? Or? Yeah, it'll it'll be on the website, and yeah. we'll put. And and we got uh, Dewitt, uh, Jerry, Stanley, and Mark are so far have uh, put their name forward. We'll 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 put together. Uh, we'll try to put together a charge for the committee over the next 
um, couple of meetings. A couple of meetings. Yeah. We'll put a charge together. So I, I would say within three or four weeks, we'd have the committee start sitting for their meetings. You interested in the committee, Susan? Or? Maybe. Okay. I hear they'll have some really good T-shirts. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of some good slogans. All right. Is there, is there <laughs> and, and again, as I said before, we you know it's nothing wrong to be to be concerned about an issue. We 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 we, we, uh, we understand that. I, I appreciate everyone's uh, input tonight. Estella, I'm very happy you brought that easement because now, now, yeah. now we're going back to 19, November 1982. Three? Well, I think you ought to get a copy. And, and I'm, I'm going yeah, to start, gonna, I'm gonna start looking in, in, in the minutes so that, you know. We'll, start sending copies out and write this out to the copies. land owners. Yeah. All right, anything else? Anybody else like to share? Do what? The town can uh, proceed with looking at the Culver's too. Yeah, George, George is going to George, George is going to go out. He's going he's going but George George and Stanley are going to talk on the way out to figure out time for them to get together. That's the and uh, we'll take a look at that. I have a question about Culver's in general. Like, is there uh, how many Culver's do you think that have been sitting around for years that might be um. undersized? Compared, to, yeah. So, so that's that's almost a whole no, separate issue in a way, isn't it? In terms of yeah. Well, with increased rainfall. Right. right. Um, that's what I'm thinking. I think New Hampshire says 80 percent of their culverts are awesome. not adequate for handling the future predicted yeah. rainfalls. Vermont's replacement policy is 1.5 to two times now. Current size. Like if you replace size. them, they go. <laughs> They just get bigger. Yeah. yeah, and and actually, the state's offering a program what's called MVP. Um, mm. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And that that's so coming that that'll look at culverts in town and and, and help awesome. size culverts. So we can look at that also. Okay. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Secret code. Thanks. It's going to be a fun project. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Jennifer. It, it's the only way we're going to solve it. Mark, thank you. No, you're Thanks, Kurt. Thank you. I'm fascinated on who's responsible for maintaining these things over the next six years. Well, that's so. That's a murky thing. It's a murky thing. All trapped up. And that's why we're all here because of its murkiness, for one thing. Can I stand aside? Tweak it. Um, um, thank you. Well, we know she's got a copy at the very least, so. Has a lot of good information anyway. It does. So, yeah. so that that that's that that's an easement from November it was sent out by the Board of Selectmen November twenty fourth, nineteen eighty two or nineteen eighty three. So can you ask Wendy to check the laser fiche yep. and the selectmen minute Teresa at that too. time? There should be something recorded on her deed. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Estelle? Do, do, do. Okay, well, get on the list because we're going we're to need a lot of people for this. So. When, when I see what the, what the <coughs> job description is Conversation and what it's going to be. We'll probably end up coming up with a charter most likely and posting that out there so that way people can read it. You know what I mean? It'll be on the website. That'd be the most logical place to put it. Yep. There'll be a notice on the front page of the site, most likely. I don't know how the town's going to maintain. There'll be a notice on the, somewhere on the website that will tell you. It will most likely be on the in the news or whatever the recent section. This is from November 24th, 1982. Right, I know what you're talking about. Like, I tried to find the agenda for this meeting today and I couldn't find it so it's not always easy to find stuff on that but but it would be good if you're going to do that to put a, a press release out in the reporter so people yeah, that can take a look at that. Yeah. so that people actually you know widely have I an found, opportunity to know that I found traditionally though that no matter how hard you work to notify people there's always people who claim they, they never get notified I, I, that's always a perennial know challenge, I, I, you know. I understand that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but we can certainly take a look at it. You know. I don't right. think they've this usually done it in the past, but that's no back. reason to not do it in the future. Everything you know, is as far as the notification. It's very December easy to do <coughs> release. Yep. You know, okay. and then so look between those days. The problem is many people don't read the newspapers anymore. Yeah. Yeah. People read the recorder. Some do. I, I mean, I get, I get the recorder and the gazette, but... 
Huh? I can, but you know, you know, you're not without a Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you, thanks. you know what I don't understand is, is I don't. Usually, 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 and I was looking at it, but usually when something's filed in a deed. They're like this, they'll tell you what book and page it's on oh, the yeah, book the and page. Right. Doesn't look like it got recorded. So put on the look. It's usually a stamp, too. It, it's usually a stamp on it. I don't feel that. Yeah, but that's true. Thank you, Estelle. Huh? Yeah. We don't know. It's going to be a couple of weeks. We're going, to, we're going to put it together, okay? We'll, we'll, I know where you live. Make sure you talk to George, please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for bringing that tonight. No. All right. Motion to adjourn. Are we all set? I am. All set. David, you all ready? Yeah. We have a motion to adjourn. We got a second. Second. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have a three three zero for adjournment at seven forty.